building, of course, from the sea, from the Seacrest uh, compound. Yes, that south, building. South, right, South Ham, on the way to South Hampton. What happened with that? They were going to pay rent and use that building. Oh, they're still paying their rent, but they're not ready to take in customers yet. They're doing some internal um, uh, refurbishment. So um, for now, they're going to be they're going to be upstairs. But they are paying. Oh yeah. Okay. I, I would like to know, like, uh, I have internet with Comcast. I had internet with Comcast, and I didn't pay the uh, March bill because I said they're coming on the 26th of March, so they will reimburse me money. But they charged me also up to June for my internet. So, I mean, you know. Uh, check the dates, make sure your date frame is right, but. If, if you're right, uh, don't pay it, you know? I mean, it's as simple as that. If they did not provide the service and you were disconnected, don't pay it. They got a computer system. They're gonna keep sending out invoices as long as they can get away with it, okay? Okay, so I could, I can come, stop paying them and that's it. Come to the broadband meeting because I'm sure you're not the only one with this issue. Oh. All right? Okay, thank you. See, I didn't believe that it would be automatically terminated. I called, and I got a name, and so I made sure I canceled my, all of my Comcast stuff. All right. Uh, okay, uh, we have some uh, people here who have busy days to get out and get to, and I would like to bring up uh, our commissioner, uh, County Commissioner, District 2, uh, Mr. Mr. Greg Weiss. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you all. Uh, sorry I missed you last month. I was uh, traveling on county business. I was in Washington, D.C., uh, trying to uh, promote uh, Palm Beach County with the legislators up there and in, uh, in making sure that they... Uh, knew our needs and um, so I was up there and I, I apologize for missing your meeting last month and uh, after that I went up to Tallahassee as well uh, to uh, express the needs for Palm Beach County uh, to the state as well. A um, couple things I want to bring you up to date on, just one second, let me bring up my notes. Um, one of the things we had, uh, some folks had contacted the office uh, a couple weeks ago and uh, regarding the access road along uh, Okeechobee, just outside the gates of the village. And that is not, that is actually a private road. Um, it is not, a, it's not uh, maintained by the county. However, we did, uh, con we uh, contacted our code enforcement, code went out and then uh, identified the issues and it's actually the property owners who are responsible for that road. So uh, let them know about their responsibility and they have uh, started repairing uh, some of those potholes. We're checking on the quality of that work, but uh, it should be a little less bumpy on your cars out there. Um, I wanna br uh, talk to you a little bit about what's happening with Lake Okeechobee. This is a very serious issue for everybody in Palm Beach County, not only Palm Beach County, Miami-Dade, and Broward counties. Uh, if you don't know, Lake Okeechobee is part of our water system, our water supply. And during the winter months when there's not much rain here, water comes from the lake and is used uh, not by the city of West Palm Beach and also th by our county um, to help recharge our uh, well fields. Uh, Brian Mast, who represents, Congressman Brian Mast, represents this uh, community uh, and also represents uh, areas to the north, has been pushing, along with Governor DeSantis, to have them lower the lake levels to uh, 10 and a half feet or below. The Army Corps of Engineers operates the lake and likes to keep the lake levels at between 12 and a half and 14 and a half feet of water. And that's a safe level for the dikes and it provides enough um, water for everything that we need here in Palm Beach County in South Florida. Um, if 
they, and they have been lowering the lake levels. I don't know if you've read about it in the paper. One of the things they're also doing is they shifted the flow of water into the Lake Worth Lagoon. And that means coming through the C-51 canal, which releases the water right between uh, the border between West Palm Beach and the town of Lake Worth Beach now. Um, but that water, once it gets into the canal or into the lagoon, has nowhere to go. It's very far from the inlets. And so the issue for us is when it comes in, it stays there and it'll stay there for quite some time. And so they've been pushing the water there as opposed to putting it uh, into the St. Lucie River, um, which I guess uh, Congressman Mast uh, is his preference. So I'm telling you this because I want you to be aware of it. If you are so inclined, you can contact uh, your Congressman's office, uh, Brian Mast, and let them know your concern because you should have a concern about this. Uh, heaven help us that we have another drought like we did in uh, 2011. It's putting us seriously at risk and that we would not have the water for our community. So your county, your cities are all um, reaching out to the Army Corps and reaching out uh, to our state officials to let them know of our concern. This is going to continue to go on. Look, we're all, everybody wants to make sure that um, you know, we don't want to see those algae blooms. Nobody wants to have uh, any of that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, um, I hate to say it, but our lives are more important, um, quite frankly, than algae blooms. So uh, that, that is something I wanted to make you aware of. Uh, update on, uh, we just received a, and signed off this week on a reimbursement to receive $5.6 million from the federal government to reimburse us for security services for the president. As you know, we pr provide that security and they have reimbursed us uh, $5.6 million. And we recently attracted a new business coming into Palm Beach County. It's going to provide over $100, $100 million in economic um, development. And uh, that was done in conjunction uh, with a lot of people working together um, with this company, and they're going to have high-paying jobs. Um, Joe Anderson is port commissioner and a good friend of this community. I just want to make you aware, um, Joe, a couple weeks ago, had a stroke. Um, he's a very young man, and just two things. Number one, he's recovering, and he seems to be doing very well and he should be back in full swing, uh, hopefully in the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, but uh, we send our prayers uh, to him and his family. But strokes can happen to anyone at any time. And so it's important. Uh, he, you know, when it, I talked to him last week and he was saying that when it first uh, hit him, um, you know, he, he didn't realize what was happening, so he just went to bed and he got up the next, or he woke up the next day and he couldn't move. And that's when he realized how serious uh, the situation was. And of course, they got him to the hospital and uh, were able to treat him. And, and he expects to have a full and complete recovery. But he is in rehab now and uh, working to get uh, his, uh, some of his uh, movement back and motor skills back. But he sounds great. He talks well. And um, so he's doing, um, he's doing very good. Um, and then lastly, uh, I'll let you know, uh, well, I'm going to be at a ribbon cutting, I think, at 11, is that 1130 uh, for the new sign uh, out on Okeechobee. So, um, you know, we look forward to that. But my office was able to get involved and help move along the permits. So just letting you know, the office is here to help. Um, if you have any issues, I know some folks caught me this morning with a couple of things, and we're going to follow up on that for them. But if you have any issues that we can be helpful to you on, uh, I'll give you the office phone number. Uh, if anyone wants to write it down or plug it into your phones, the office number is 561-355-2202. I'll say it again, 561-355-2202. 2202, um, and we're happy to help out in any way we can. That's why we're here. So uh, I thank you for allowing me this time on the floor, bringing you up to date. Um, you would, uh, can I take any questions? Is that okay, Mr. President? Yes, of course. Okay, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Come, yes, come up to the mic. Oh, that's your, right. Your question may be of interest to many others.
Hi, how are you? I'm a bicyclist that goes... A little closer to the mic. I'm a bicyclist that goes to Publix by bicycle. Mm. And if, the, if I come back at night, Haver Hill Road um, is really badly designed because the lights are on the side of Century Village. There is no sidewalk there. And the sidewalk on the other side is completely dark. There is no bike lanes. So I think it's extremely dangerous. So I believe that we must put lights on the other side of the Century Village to make it safer for bicyclists. And maybe we should also have sidewalks on the other side too. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to make a suggestion on this. And I'm sure this is something that the county commission would have to get intimately involved. If you would write down your concerns, um, and maybe with a little sketch, uh, we, we will advocate for you with the commissioner and make sure that uh, they have the details. Please write, write this down because there may be others impacted. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, no, so, oh, Philip, no, you, you're gonna to respond to him? Well, I'm just gonna yeah. I'll just let you know sure. that we'll be, happy to, we'll be happy to take that forward and talk to our engineering department about that and, and see what we can do. Phyllis. Oh, thanks a lot. First of all, thank you for the lovely letter you sent my husband as the newly elected vice president. Secondly, would you be able to name this company that's coming in with $100 million for us? I mean, that, that's a biggie. We, I will, Niels will be looking it up right now. So, what's next? Anyone next? Um, any other questions? Uh, I just want to make a comment only to add you to the list because I've made this comment to Paulette and to uh, Jeff Coons. That's about as far back as I go. Right offshore is a rather significant pond called the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> and I would reference you to the state of Israel who made the desert bloom through desalinization. Yes, I know it's expensive, but there's more water uh, through desalinization of the Atlantic than you could drink in a thousand lifetimes. Uh, again, I appreciate the cost. I've done a lot of research on this, at least the Israeli model. And I don't know why this is not being seriously considered in the state of Florida. Uh, the, the, the Lake Okeechobee issue uh, it's highly technical. I researched that too. But I would just leave that on your desk to think about. Maybe somebody's working on this. All right. Uh, the, uh, the name of the company is uh, Gulfstream Product Support. It's an aviation maintenance company. So they, uh, refer they do refurbishing of parts of uh, airplanes and so forth. And so those are the types of jobs they're going to be providing. All right. All right. Anything else? All right. Well, we look forward to seeing you uh, later this morning, uh, hopefully at the ribbon cutting, and also uh, uh, see you uh, uh, next month. Thanks. Uh, welcome aboard to our CPA. Sebastian, would you like to give your report now? I know we're jumping around here, little folks, but. Good morning, everyone. I have to apologize for the delay. There was a little calendar mix up this morning. In the financials, uh, we're now taking a look at year-to-date figures compared to year-to-date figures. Last month, we compared January to January, and this month, or uh, this delegates meeting, we're comparing January and February this year versus January and February last year. Uh, and we we'll also have the budget versus actual, and then the breakdown on the balance sheet. One of the things that I wanted to mention is something that's going to be new on the balance sheet for March's uh, financials will be that we have the Seacoast bank account open. Originally, we thought it was going to be a little bit under 2% for what we would be earning. Uh, I have the new rate, and it's 2.35%. So 
definitely higher than what we originally quoted. So now without that money just sitting there, now we're earning uh, quite a bit on it. And it's still all FDIC insured and still liquid. So that was one of the accomplishments and one of the goals that we wanted to get through over the last three or four months. So that's all taken care of. Um, as far as the budget versus actual for January and February versus our annualized budget, we're doing good. Uh, everything is still within line and within budget. Uh, there's a few timing differences that we have on uh, advertising for the UCO reporter. So we're going to go ahead and make some changes to that and get the February invoicing in there so that way it's shown. Um, Besides that, pretty much everything is the same. Uh, we had a previous line item on last year's balance sheet, if anyone remembers, of the prepaid insurance. Because we, because we paid the insurance very close to the beginning of the year, what we did this time is we actually put the entire amount in there because we're comparing our budget versus actual on an annualized basis. So now it's comparing apples to apples where before we would accumulate it every month. Now when you look at the January and February financials for 2019, you'll see the entire uh, insurance payment. Any of the rebates or anything that comes in will be over the next few months and then we'll just go ahead and add that to it and then that will reduce that number a little bit. Uh, do I have any questions about the January, February financials? Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, Sebastian. Uh, I want to uh, now call up uh, Mike Pratt from the property appraiser's office. It's great to be here, I just have to say that much. Uh, first, uh, we were here yesterday and every uh, first Thursday of every month, re reiterate that the property appraiser's office is here in the uh, atrium area in front of the clubhouse here, or in this area up front, and we can take homestead exemption applications, answer questions, and talk to you about the valuations that you're receiving. So we're here again the first Thursday of every month, and we'll be here first Friday of every month. Um, appreciate all your support, and thank you very much. Uh, it's very important, I, 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 especially for new people. It amazes me on occasion I find uh, new people in my building. So I imagine uh, it, it's spread across campus. Don't overlook that homestead exemption, folks. Come in, it's just a very, very simple job. Uh, and uh, you'll greatly appreciate it, okay? Um, committee reports, I'm not aware, but and let me ask, is there any new business to come before delegate assembly, such as motions or something like that? Sometimes I forget that, but Randall reminds me. <laughs> All right. Okay, seeing none. Uh, committee reports are contained herein, unless there's an emergency uh, report from a uh, committee chair. Seeing none, we will move on to uh, good and welfare. The floor is open. Yes, Marcia. Uh, last month I went to the Waste Pro, Waste Pro meeting and no I learned something from Don Foster actually that I didn't know. That one of our, that our, one of our management companies have taken out the fact that they clean out our trash containers. And I think that's a biggie, since we now have flies in the village that we never had before. Now, if they, I would think it's important for them, if they, especially since they raise the prices very often, and I, I'm sure people don't know that they're not doing that any longer. Even though there is a company you can hire to, to clean it out, it really should be part of the, it should be back in the contract. And I just wanted you to know that if you don't know, that it's no longer in your contract. But you don't make Okay. All right, Ray. Hey, Dave. Yeah, I'm Wayne Smith, and I just want to mention something I think is the 
uh, poor communications from the committee. In February, I went to the Transportation Committee to ask about our bus stop in Somerset. Mm -hmm. At that meeting, I took uh, signatures from the people in Somerset, and nobody knew whether or not that bus stop was going to be there or not. However, at that meeting, I discovered that the meeting in January, you voted 10 to 2 to keep that bus stop. But still in February, nobody knew. Everybody shrugged their shoulders. In March, I came to the delegate meeting and asked the same question. Do we have a bus stop in Somerset? Is it still there? Everybody shrugged their shoulders. Nobody knows. Somebody, Jose, was supposed to call me from the February meeting. I never heard anybody. Now, I look at the UCO reporter, and it says the bus stop is going away. Now, since January, you guys known that that bus stop is going away. But for some reason, you didn't want to tell us. Now it's roped off, it looks like the tennis court's going there, so I don't know what's going to happen. I just think it was bad communications on the part of the committee to not tell us from the beginning the bus stop is going away after we went through all this stuff and then tell us that the signatures we got, half the people don't ride the bus, which I think is irrelevant. Because just because you don't ride the bus today doesn't mean you're going to ride it tomorrow. Uh, I don't think we're getting any younger, so people might not be riding it today, might want to ride it tomorrow or within the next six months. Thank you. All right. Um, Lori, you want to? Uh, it was my understanding Jose was going to put it back. Yes? No? Okay. All right. Well. That was my last understanding from the meeting. Maybe I got it wrong. That there was enough interest in that stop to put it back. Eddie, you got anything on that? Not. All right, Olga. I want to thank the delegates for bringing the one vote and passing it to go forward. But now I am interested in bringing one vote to the delegates for passage. I will bring that to the advisory committee and hope that they will do it. One of the biggest complaints against it has been that it would cost a fortune. Yeah. I have a proposal for, for it to go forward without any cost, which I hope to bring to you. I really want you to consider this seriously because right now we have a little more than half of the delegates voting for UCO offices. I want to give that vote to every unit resident owner. And I would like you to seriously consider it and vote yes when it comes to you. This is extremely important. It's the democratic way. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Olga. Uh, Les? Yeah, I'm Les Rivkin from Stratford J. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the 47 people who voted for me. Uh, while that wasn't a large number because most of the people uh, bowed down to the pressure put on them as to who to vote for. Uh, but mainly, I want to talk about the article that the president wrote in this last Yuka reporter, which I thought was uh, beneath him, uh, was infantile, was belittling, uh, and was a projection of his own needs, and totally inappropriate. We deserve more respect than we were shown in that article. Thank you. Thank you, Les. <laughs> Sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is my first meeting, so I may not be following the right procedures, but. I would like to make four different points. Uh, I'll try to make them very briefly. I've been a resident for two years, and I think these four points came to my mind this morning. Uh, pursuing what I said to the commissioner about the bicycle, bicycle safety is very important. So I, I request all the drivers to be respectful of the bicyclists on the road. If you, if you want to pass the bicyclist, that's fine. You can honk and pass the bicyclist. But just don't honk at the bicyclist because he's slower than you. He is slower than you, of course. 
and uh, and you know be be mindful. Especially if you came to the gate, everybody stopped anyway. You know, there's no need to pass the bicyclist. You know, it's like you can be behind the bicyclist. So. I, I really feel that no we need idea. to improve the safety of bicyclists here. We need to have bicycle lanes everywhere. Uh, and I've talked to Mr. Israel about it informally once, and I will continue to work on that. Number two, uh, it'd be nice if the village, the village is amazing uh, uh, in terms of sustainable living and things like recycling. My suggestion is that when new residents come in, who may be from parts of the world that don't recycle or whatever, uh, we might have a spot of the orientation how to recycle, a, 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 a program on how to recycle so people do the right thing. I mean, I see people doing the wrong thing all the time. Even though we have separate bins, they don't do the right thing. Uh, okay, so number three. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember now. Okay, so um, some of the buildings seem to have a nice improvement in them, which is that the sewer pipes, the, the, the units tend to share the same sewer line when they come out. And so if there's a problem of clog, then nobody knows where the problem is. And especially if you have an upstairs, downstairs situation, and somebody from upstairs plunges some nonsense from upstairs, it becomes a downstairs problem because it comes down and clogs the sewer pipe. So some of the units have this beautiful improvement where I think, if I'm not wrong, every double unit has a sewer access outside. I believe all of them do, but the old ones are corroded, so there is no sewer access from the outside. So uh, my own building doesn't have it, so I'm going to push in my own building to put that back where you have to remove the cast iron and put PVC access to the sewer from the outside. So that when there's a problem in the sewer, people can just take care of it from the outside. So I suggest that other buildings look into this, if I'm right. I'm not sure if I'm right about this. Uh, but I would like to see this improvement done. And I forgot the fourth point. I'm going to yield it for the next meeting. Thank you. That's your three minutes. I have a comment about Atlantic Broadband. Um, this week, I